Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're going to get started. I'm Steve Dillon. I'm chairman of the Normal Board of Directors. I want to welcome you all to our 37th annual conference here in beautiful Berkeley, California. We are very glad that you're with us. California is still the ground zero in the government's war on medical marijuana. I am honored and excited to be with you and our outstanding group of speakers and panelists. We have a great conference plan. Lots of opportunities to learn, share, experience with each other, and to recommit to ending government's prohibition of marijuana. The theme of our conference this year is, it's not your parents' prohibition. My parents were born during the government's failed effort at alcohol prohibition from 1919 to 1934. They learned a lot, uh, personally, about homemade beer and wine, and even about secret stills in the basement where they grew up. They shared with me some of the alcohol paraphernalia of my grandfather, Dr. John Dillon. He had a silver folding whiskey case that uh, he could put in his pocket, or his briefcase, or his uh, medical bag. He also had a leather cigar case with fake glass cigars, which were really glass containers or tubes for whiskey. A little cork on hand, but it looked in a nice leather case. He could put in his suit, and it looked just like cigars, but that was his alcohol paraphernalia. I still got that. I should have brought it. Uh, my parents weren't old enough to drink alcohol during Prohibition, but my grandparents did regularly. And my, and my parents didn't think their parents were criminals at all. Just Al Capone and the gangsters who committed violent acts to support the illegal business enterprise caused by Prohibition. The Prohibition was bad, not alcohol. Alcohol's not too good, but compared to the Prohibition and the violence, that was the problem. There was an attitude of our citizens at the time that the government couldn't really tell us that we couldn't drink alcohol because we were Americans. Yeah. It was fun to go to the speakeasy. It was a forbidden fruit that led some people to drink alcohol even when they didn't and weren't going to, but because it was forbidden. However, people didn't often get arrested for drinking a beer or having a glass of wine. People didn't have their homes searched or seized or forfeited for home brew or wine in the basement. This marijuana prohibition is much worse than our parents' alcohol prohibition. It's, just, it's more uh, costly. It's unconstitutional. It's illegal. Uh, it's lasted 71 damn years. Uh, it, it's caused a loss, a loss of freedom and property not seen by citizens during the alcohol prohibition. We have lots of opportunities for licensing and, and, and chances to go to school that they didn't suffer during the alcohol prohibition. <clears throat> loss of valuable medicine and compassionate care of the sick in this country uh, wasn't something that they suffered during the alcohol prohibition. Uh, and and, and the, 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 the danger in the war of losing truth from the government didn't suffer the same way. Uh, much worse now. What were the results of the American alcohol prohibition? It was undisputed that the prohibition was a complete failure. It certainly didn't work to prohibit alcohol consumption by millions of Americans, from the very rich to the very poor, from the very beginning to the very end of the prohibition, people drank all over the country. It was a failure. The prohibition increased in, uh, resulted in an increase in organized crime and brutal violence. It resulted in corruption of our courts, police, and politicians. It misdirected our tax resources. It wasted millions of dollars that could have been spent to improve the lives of American citizens. And they had an economic problem at the time. The prohibition resulted in growing disrespect for government and law enforcement. It led to countless deaths, not only from gang violence in the streets, trying to control the illegal market, but also from the deaths from the tainted bathtub gins. The prohibition made millions of American citizens criminals overnight, even though the vast majority had no intent to harm anyone, not even themselves, that they had lost the right to choose for themselves or to do it in their own bodies. Federal law enforcement officials like FBI's Hoover 
use the prohibition as a reason or an excuse to greatly increase the funding and power of their agencies. And they had never relinquished that power and control. The alcohol prohibition was doomed because it was standing directly in the way of the citizen's right to choose to use alcohol, even if it wasn't good for them. There is a fundamental belief in America that we, the people, have the right to make decisions about how we live our life. That we are entitled to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. However, we define it. And as long as we don't hurt others or interfere with their rights, we can do what we choose. The government's marijuana prohibition is also doomed to fail for all the same reasons that the alcohol prohibition failed. The government's 71-year-old prohibition of marijuana has also failed. It's, it's counterproductive. When it started in 1937, the government was trying to keep in place the federal law of bureaucracy from the alcohol prohibition, which ended just a few years earlier. The government picked marijuana to prohibit for a variety of reasons, such as, well, number one, there aren't that many people that smoked marijuana back in 37. It was mostly black people and Mexican people. There was only about 5,000 people in the whole country that smoked it then, so maybe there wouldn't be such a backlash to this prohibition like with all the millions of people that use alcohol. It's a racist policy, folks. That's what it started with. That's what it still is. Most Americans uh, were unaware of the benefits of marijuana, even though it was used in many patent medicines and treatments, most of them, uh, at the turn of the, that century. How powerful lobbyists and their politicians protected the pharmaceutical industry, the paper industry, the oil industry, the tobacco and alcohol industries, and the competition for consumer dollars. The prohibition is still in place for all these reasons, mainly greed and control. The marijuana prohibition has also resulted in increase in organized violent crime and gang warfare in our streets. It has resulted in corruption of police, politicians, and courts. It has wasted billions of our tax dollars each year, money that could be spent on education or roads or social security or in protecting us from real crime or real terrorists. The marijuana prohibition has led to a strong disrespect for government in general and for school, police, and law enforcement officials in particular. One of the worst consequences of the marijuana prohibition is the loss of truth about marijuana and its benefits. The government lies about marijuana. Drug Czar Walters regularly states that people aren't even getting arrested for marijuana possession in this country. That is despite the fact that the FBI Uniform Crime Report for 2007 recently stated that 872,721 of our citizens were arrested last year. One arrest each 37 seconds, and ladies and gentlemen, 97% of those arrests were possession of a small amount of marijuana. Last week on October 10th, the 20 millionth marijuana arrest in this country happened. Samuel Caldwell was the first federal marijuana prisoner. He was sentenced in 19, October 1937 to Fort Leavenworth for four years for selling two joints. He died in prison of stomach cancer. You know, now there's at least 33,655 state marijuana prisoners and 10,785 federal marijuana prisoners. One out of eight people in prison in this country are there for marijuana. You know, the marijuana arrests last year were a record. It was up 5% since the year before. The marijuana arrests accounted for almost half, 47.5% of all the drug arrests in this country last year. Our America, sweet land of liberty, has 5% of the world's population, but 25% of the world's prison population. You know, Americans will smoke pot if they want to, just like past Americans drank alcohol if they wanted to. About half the adult population has tried marijuana, and over 20 million Amer Americans regularly use it. Some of them in this room. <laughs> Twelve states have medical marijuana laws, and dozens of cities and towns have decriminalized marijuana possession or made it the lowest priority of law enforcement in their city. More states are passing considering eliminating the ban on hemp and hemp products, too.